Okay, I wanted to show some of you guys a real simple example without opening up one of my rifles, what a spring piston rifle looks like inside, but using just some household items here. This is for barbecue sauce. It's like an injector type thing. Looks like a syringe. And this is a toilet paper holder. Now, on a spring piston rifle, typically what you have is you have the spring right here. So imagine that this is connected to here. You have a spring. And then that pushes the piston seal forward like this. Okay. Then on a gas ram, what you have on a gas ram is picture inside of here, instead of having that spring, you've got nitrogen in there. Okay. And nitrogen on, and then usually the smaller end of the strut is facing forward. Now, if you have a reaccess like uh, Umarex rifles, what they'll do is they'll turn this around so the bigger strut is facing this direction, but remember it's still got gas in it instead of a metal spring. So uh, the advantages of uh, gas rams is they're more stable and they don't vibrate as much. A spring will typically, if it's not tuned, what will happen is a spring, or if it's a real, real high velocity spring piston rifle, when, when it comes forward what it does in microseconds is it goes like this because the spring vibrates this direction. So you do get a side-to-side -side recoil, or a vibration, or a hum, or whatever. Um, so on a gas piston, what happens is it's smoother. It comes out like this. You know, it's a little more smoother because you don't have a metal spring doing a twang on you. So if you can understand that. Now, what I want to demonstrate, since I, since I think you have the basic concept on gas spring and uh, spring piston, I want to show you what happens to the piston seal when you shoot too heavy of a pellet. Now I'm not going to tell you what the heaviest pellet is to use but I stop about 13 grain. Uh, there have been guys that have blown out uh, piston seals using 15 grain pellets on Magnum air rifles and uh, I I only use up to like I think I use it 13.43 JSB but anyway here's what happens when you have too heavy of a pellet what you're doing is the piston seal is coming forward and it's expanding that seal around the walls here. And what happens is, at some point where it can't push the pellet out of the barrel, what could happen is, is this seal can get damaged from that high pressure. Okay? And on light pellets, light pellets, you don't want to uh, shoot a lot of them light pellets either, uh, the ones that uh, shoot mock speeds. Um, and... On my elevation, that's 1125 feet per second for the speed of sound. But uh, the light pellets, I would I would say something uh, something like seven and a half grain or, or under eight grain or something like that, where you have too light of a pellet and it's going mock speeds. And what's happening to that uh, spring piston right here is it's doing something different than the heavy pellets. What it's doing is it's slamming like this really hard into the breech. So it's slamming real fast and real hard. Whereas a medium pellet, it goes a little slower like this. So it cushions a little better. But when you have too light of a pellet, it just wham! It slams right up against there. And uh, you can mess up the front of your seal that way. Um, so anyway, um, another thing about breaking in a, a spring piston rifle too is that, uh, you know, um, you want to you want to break it in for 500 rounds or so before you do your accuracy testing. I know some people that they just take it out of the box and they start shooting it, and uh, they start complaining about the accuracy. But then you find out they're doing the accuracy tests the wrong way. They're firing three shots of each pellet. You know they're not cleaning their barrel between each type of pellet they're using. Um, I would say do five sets of five or ten shot groups. But I would say run a tin of pellets through your uh, spring piston or gas ram air rifle to get it used to uh, you know all the parts breaking in and also the trigger. If you have a trigger issue with your rifle, sometimes it's it's because you're not shooting it enough. So get some cheap pellets. Uh, shoot shoot a box of 500 your first night. You know get it get it all broken in and stuff. Uh, you can tell that the trigger is going to be a little bit better. And then after you're done with that, I would uh, start doing your tests and stuff like that. Typically, the way I do tests is I'll start with cleaning the barrel uh, for each pellet.
And I'll do like uh, two sets of ten or five sets of five, which is common. Like up in Canada, they have uh, the cadet, uh, you know, shooting clubs and stuff like that. They'll do five sets of five, and they'll do several sets before they compete. So that way, if there's any fouling issues, then that's taken care of because some rifles prefer to be fouled and other uh, rifles like a cleaner barrel. But you have to test each pellet and find out which, which that is. So the only way you can test that out is you have to fire a lot of pellets. And you have to have a perfect bench rest set up so that you can do that. So nice and steady. You want to take out all the variables, all the motion, and stuff like that when you do your test. But anyway, that's that's how I would do the accuracy test after you break in your gas spring or spring piston rifle. So, but anyway, if you have any other questions, you can ask me. I have uh, opened up uh, several gas spring and spring piston rifles in my lifetime, and uh, I found that uh, a lot of times, I'd say about eight out of ten, you don't have to open them up unless you're doing something wrong on your end, like uh, shooting too light of a pellet or too heavy a pellet. You really shouldn't have to open them up and repair them that often. So, But anyway, thank you very much for watching.